everybody, it's Pastor Chris. And if you're watching this video, you are curious. What does it mean to be saved or how does one get saved? And I'm so glad if you're watching this video that you're you're excited about this or you're at least considering it or you're pursuing a decision to follow Jesus. First of all, uh, making a decision to follow Jesus is the greatest decision you'll ever make. It will be the most life-changing decision you'll ever make. And this is the truth that the gospel has come to change us and Jesus has come to say, come follow me over and over again. That's how Jesus called his disciples, come follow me. So if Jesus is calling you to come follow you, follow him, then you need to follow him. I mean, that's that, that's that simple. And take that first step of obedience. So how does one do that? Well, you know, listen, there's not a simple answer in the Bible. A lot of times it's a simple interaction where Jesus comes into someone's life and simply says, come follow me. And they do. And they just give everything they can. You know, and Jesus uses terminologies like anybody that's going to follow me must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. Uh, wow. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a life altering decision. So it's a big decision, but we're glad you've made this decision and it's the greatest decision you will do. So I want to go to the gospel of John chapter three, where Jesus runs into a man by the name of Nicodemus. He was a religious leader of his day, a Jewish leader. And he was curious in this Jesus, who is this Jesus? Because he had heard of the Messiah and he didn't know if Jesus was the Messiah. Of course, Jesus is the Messiah, but he comes and he says in, in chapter three, Rabbi to, to Jesus, we know that you are the teacher that has come from God. And no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? How can he enter a second time into his mother's womb? And Jesus answered, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of spirit is is spirit. Do not marvel what I've said. You must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and hears its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit of God. Isn't that beautiful? So Jesus goes on in that same chapter and gets to verse 16 and says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one only begotten Son. And Jesus was talking about himself. That's me, right? That if you believe in me, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. So may we put our belief in Jesus. That's the key to salvation. Jesus is the way. In John, we also hear in 14, 6, Jesus says, I'm the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So will we place our faith in Jesus Christ? That's how one becomes saved. So what must we do? Romans 3, 23 tells us, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So what separates us from God, what keeps us from being born again is our sin. So we have this, this nature inside of us, the sin nature that separates us from God. Our, our, our nature is not in alignment. We are created initially in the image of God, but sin has tarnished that. So Jesus came to restore that. So what do we do? We repent of our sin. So the first thing you gotta do, I admit I'm a sinner, I repent of my sin. And when we do that, we repent means to do a U-turn. We change from living by our sin nature to living for God. So can we admit we're a sinner, believe, you know, admit and then repent, turning to Jesus and then believing in Jesus Christ, that one must be born again by belief in Christ. I believe in Christ and then the spirit comes in us and creates us and starts to make us a new creation. It's a beautiful thing. So the mission of sin and the belief in Jesus Christ. And then we commit our lives to Christ. We commit our lives to following Jesus with everything we have. In Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says, If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. For the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. And in verse 13, it says, For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, they will be saved. Isn't that beautiful? If we will believe, that Jesus Christ is Lord. We confess him with our mouths. Jesus, you are Lord and Savior of my life. And we believe in our heart. That means the essence of who we are, that Christ was raised from the dead, which means the assumption is this. We believe he died upon a cross for our sins. He was buried and he was raised from the dead. And because of that, he has the power of everlasting life. He has conquered death. And therefore, if you believe in him, he can give you eternal life. Like John 3, 16 tells, tells us, right? Whoever 
believes in the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, will not perish but have everlasting life. So if you watch a short video on salvation, I'm glad you've come and you're curious. Will you admit that you're a sinner and repent of your sins? Will you turn and believe in Jesus Christ and be born again? And then will you commit your life to following him? Meaning, I no longer follow myself. I'm no longer living for that sin nature. I'm living by the Spirit of God that's come in and changed me and has changed my life. If you have done this, I hope you'll email me at pastor at lpbconline.org. I would love to know about your decision. I would love to share it with my staff, share it with the deacons, share it with the church council, share it with the church body. And we want to just rejoice with you in your decision to become a believer and follower of Jesus Christ, to know that you're saved and that you have eternal life. Now go and live for Jesus forevermore. God bless you. And again, we rejoice in your decision of salvation.